I think we're good on that. Well, let's do example four, I think, of six. All right. How much energy does it take to warm up 25 grams of water from negative 20 to steam at 150? I'm just saying, this could be a big problem. It is. Yucky. Okay, we're starting at negative 20. Let's not do example number five. because. We'll so this problem, Mr. Sams, we're going to have to kind of uh, map the whole thing out. Yeah, okay. let's do that. So from negative 20, so we're starting here at negative 20. So, well, we started here before, didn't we? Yeah. And we're going to go all the way up to? Steam at 150. Steam at 150. Oh, my gosh. So we're going to have a five-step problem, Mr. Mm -hmm. Sams. A, B, C, D, and E. So we're going to break it up three times. No. No. Heat it up three, three times. times and break it up twice. One, uh, twice, yeah. So I'm going to start with a blank screen. So I'm going to go from negative 20 degrees as a solid to zero degrees as a solid. Now the reason I do that, of course, ladies and gentlemen, is I just need to go uh, until I hit a curve in the curve. Okay. Or, yeah. Let's let's map everything out before we do any math. So the next thing is we need to break up. All right, I lost the, my place here. There we is. go. Sorry. Okay. Then we're going to break it up. Okay. So we're going to do... Um, solid to liquid at zero. Solid to liquid is a zero. Okay, so we're going to go from zero degrees as a solid to zero degrees as a liquid. Okay. Then we need to heat it up again. So that's section C. Yep, so and we're going to go from zero, zero degrees to liquid to 100 degree liquid. So zero degrees as a liquid to 100 degrees as a liquid. Now those numbers would be different if we didn't have water. Yeah, we'd have it, the different freezing point and melting point of water, and you'll find that out when you get to your homework. All right, part D. Uh, now we're in part D, and in part D we're gonna just boil Break the water. It up. So yep. we're gonna go from a liquid to a gas. At 100. Yep. So 100 degrees as a liquid to 100 degrees as a gas, and our last stage. Going in the wrong direction. Sorry, folks. Mm -hmm. We're gonna go from 100 degrees as a gas to 150 degrees as a gas. As a gas. So we're going to go from 100 degrees as a gas to 150 degrees as a gas. So okay. now we can just plug out our equations. Yeah. This is a heated up equation, so mc delta t. And actually, this is to mc mm -hmm. delta t, mc delta t. Now, this is a break it up. So this is delta h fuss times n. And this is delta h vape times m. So now we're going to just plug these in and we'll add them together. Okay. So this was 25 grams. Uh -huh. Now this was ice. So remember the specific heat of ice. You'll have a table. 2.09. It's 2.09. I don't think I'll put the units so I can have more space. And delta okay. T is 20. Because it goes from minus 20 to zero. That's uh, 1045 joules. 1045 joules. 1045. Which is 1 1.0 kilojoules. Okay. All right. This is delta H fusion, which was 6.01 times the moles. Now we did the moles in that last problem. 25 divided by 18. Yeah, that was 1.39. 1.39 1 and this will give us a kilojoule answer so it's 18.0. Um, no, no, I messed something up. I multiply. Hang on. Mr. Sams is... I made a mistake. There we go. 34.0. Nope, I missed. Mr. <laughs> Sam. I'm having problems. I can't use my calculator. So there, 8 point... Yeah, it sounds right. 4. 8.4 kilojoules. Yeah, it should have been the same as last time, which it is. Okay, All so right, I now we're going to go from 0 to 100, and we're going to say M is, uh, what is it, 25 grams times the specific heat of ice, or of water, liquid water is 4.18. Delta T, we're going all the way through the entire temperature, 100 degrees yep. from 0 to 100. 10,450 joules. That'll be joules. 10.5 kilojoules. Which is 10.5 kilojoules. Remember, we're going to take this number, this number, and this number, and we're going to add them up. We have two more to What's add, the other of course. Two? The delta H vape was 40.7 or something, wasn't it, Mr. Sam? I don't remember. The heat of vaporization of water is? Yeah, 40.7. 40.7. Again, this is on a table. Times 1. the, actually this is M. That should be N. So 1.39. 1. 1. So that's uh, 56.6 kilojoules. Wow, that's a lot. That is a lot of energy. Compared to all the rest of them. It's a lot of energy to boil. And then 100 to 150 will be MCL. So that would be 25. Now, this is steam, and steam has a different specific heat. And so we're looking this up on a 1. table. 1.7. It's 1.7, and the change in temperature is 50, 50 degrees. 
2125. 2125 joules, joules so 2.1 kilojoules. 2.1 kilojoules. All right, so now we just add up the kilojoules. Add up. I'll put boxes around the numbers we need to add up, and Mr. Sams will be furiously adding them correctly this time. Correctly, yes. And so when we add all those box numbers up, the total energy it takes to take negative 25 grams from negative 20 all the way to 150 degrees. 78.6 kilojoules. 78.6 kilojoules. Interesting thing about that, Mr. Sams, is that almost all of the energy is being used to boil yeah, the water. Yeah, it's a lot to boil. I'd say like 70% of it, or I don't know, yeah. good math, whatever. But it takes a huge amount of energy to boil the water. Well, we'll think back to the last podcast where we had the water boiling. It takes a long time to break the bonds that holds the water molecules to the water molecules. You're right, 72% of the energy. 72%. Yeah, that's about right, 70 so it takes a huge amount of energy. You'll have to do these steps. And these numbers, the 1.7, the 4.18, the 2.09, the 6.01, and the 40.7, those are all given on a table for you guys. Yeah. And actually, let me just do one more thing to show you. There's another way to kind of look at this. The thing I want to talk about, ladies and gentlemen, is that there's, uh, when you're doing the delta H times M equation, you know, Q, uh, I, actually, we... We said delta H times N. An alternate way is to say Q is delta H times N. Oh. Ah! Delta H times M, where M is the mass. Right. So your delta H value is not going to be kilojoules per mole. It's going to be kilojoules per gram. So for example, delta H fusion of ice in, in kilojoules per gram is 0.3, I think. Uh, yeah, 0.333. So it's 0 0.333. That's kilojoules per gram. gram. So sometimes you can work with grams when you're using your break it up equation. Right. And so it's not a big deal. It's just changing the M for mass for the N for moles. Right. It and changes it's actually this value. And it saves you a step. You don't have to convert your grams into moles. Yeah, this a little way simpler, either. Yeah. yeah. Or the delta H vaporization mm -hmm. of water is 2.26 right. kilojoules per gram. Okay, and so then if I have the um, a break it up equation, I can say Q is equal to delta H B A P times M. So that's a funny looking M. Um, you can then say 2.26 times say your mass, let's say 25 grams, mm -hmm. and you would get your kilojoules, and you would get 56.5, just like we did last time. So if you look, yeah, 5. it's the same number because we use 25 grams, yeah. and so it's the same number. It's just a different way to look at it. So sure. sometimes it's easier to work in grams, and sometimes you might be working in moles. It doesn't really matter. Just make sure you use the appropriate value of delta H based on the correct units. Yeah. So that that just makes uh, a little bit easier. Yep. Yeah. Okay. So, um, folks, six unit six. The end. Is done. Unit six is done. We are the Hussey Hutch. This is one of the harder units you might have discovered in, but hey, you're smart kids. And yeah. We know that you're smart and that you can figure this out. Gas so. laws next unit. Those Ooh, are fun. Ooh, gas laws. Fun. Ooh. Get to like blow up balloons and stuff. Yeah. I mean, we meet Wilson next chapter. We do meet Wilson. Yeah. So don't forget, uh, you're going to meet Wilson next time. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you in class.